What's up Giants fans back at it with another New York Giants video and in this video I want to recap the week eight Monday night football game against the Pittsburgh Steelers now folks it's not always easy to talk about a football team that's two and six but that's exactly what I'm here to do and provide insight on how the Giants lost this game and how they could somehow be better in coming weeks as we get into the middle of the season and try not to fall off a cliff ladies and gentlemen this team they showed fight. They showed effort on Monday night, but a lot of uh, lack of discipline, lackluster protection, bad quarterback play, bad coaching at times. It was all across the board. Um, Giants lose 26-18 against the Steelers. Two and six on the season. Not fun. The Giants lose their third straight game. And the first thing that comes to mind when talking about this game Giants score a touchdown. They make the score, what was it, 23-15 at, at the time. Instead of kicking the PAT, they go for two. I did not like this decision by Coach Dayball. Also, the play design was awful. Um, you know, they'll say they couldn't execute it, but at the same time, it just did not look good. It pretty much gave away to the defense what they were going to run, a wide receiver screen to Malik Neighbors with a bunch of linemen blocking in front. Um I'm also just not a fan of going for two in that situation because if you don't get it, you're chasing points the rest of the game. Um, you know, analytics has taken over the National Football League all across the board. They have um, coaches on the staff hired to help make these decisions, which I think are part of the problem. And why coaches are getting fired a lot much quicker than they used to be is because of decisions like these. Um, I would have kicked the extra point there and only gone for two on the last touchdown, if they were to potentially get within one, 23 to 22, you can go for two, try to convert just like how they did week one, 2022 against the Tennessee Titans, steal a win on the road, get your team some momentum and get them hyped up. I think that would have been a much better decision than going for two in that personal uh, situation right there. Tie the game, do it on the last drive because then you're chasing points, and you don't want to do that. And that's exactly what the Giants did. And I'll tell you this, Daniel Jones not have a terrible game, but it wasn't great either. Um, a couple overthrows, missed Malik Neighbors on a slant, um, got sacked four times, lost a fumble, threw a pick there at the end of the game. He just sailed the ball high uh, for Theo Johnson. But – the numbers weren't awful, 24 of 38 for 264 um, against a Steelers defense, a tough Steelers defense. Uh, he did enough to keep the Giants in the football game late, and they have found their new running back one. In wake of Barkley's departure this season, a lot of people thought, you know, Devin Singletary's the guy. This rookie, Tracy, will be a good change of pace. Pass catching back, wrong. Tyrone Tracy is the real deal, ladies and gentlemen. He can run between the tackles. He's good with outside zones. You saw him get that 40-plus yard touchdown in the middle of the fourth quarter there to bring the Giants back within one possession. He could take the top off a of defense in a hurry. 20 rushes for 145 yards and one score, averaging over seven yards per carry. 20 carries for Tracy, just two for Devin Singletary. Now, unfortunately for Tracy, he suffered a concussion. He's now in concussion protocol. Week 9 status in doubt. We're not sure if he's going to play, but... Devin Singletary had a fumbling problem earlier on in the season. Tyron Tracy Jr. takes advantage of it. Singletary got hurt for a couple weeks, trying to sprinkle him back into the lineup, and clearly he's still not 100%. Tracy Jr. took advantage. Hopefully he himself is okay. Um, Darius Slayton, four catches, 108 yards. Um, Malik Neighbors had seven catches for 71 yards on 13 targets. Theo Johnson getting more involved in the passing game, which I like. Three catches for 35 yards. Their other tight end, Chris Manhurts, had a touchdown that was called back for an eligible receiver downfield. I believe it was an offensive lineman. Might have been Chris Hubbard. Wandale, typical stat line, minimal yardage, a lot of catches. But the biggest problem in this game, ladies and gentlemen, the Giants gave up 426 yards of offense to the Steelers, and this ultimately led – to Deontay Banks being benched in the first half of this game. First couple drives of the game, the defense got carved up easily. Um, Banks was missing tackles left and right, played poorly. You know, Dexter Lawrence was going after him and the DBs on the sideline after one drive. Jerome Henderson and the DB 
players were talking back. Banks get, gets benched. And let's be real, guys. Giants were already paper thin at the corner position on Monday Night Football. No Adoree Jackson or Cordell Flott. Now, Trey Hawkins dressed, but he was banged up. He didn't play much at all. So they rolled originally with Banks, Drew Phillips, and Nick McLeod. When Banks got benched, you saw Greg Stroman, who was elevated from the practice squad, starting, starting at outside corner across from Nick McLeod, who's supposed to be a core special teamer. Those are your two starting corners, bad, and with Drew Phillips playing in the slot. It also forced Phillips to play some outside corner as well, which is not his number one forte. So that definitely hurt the Giants, and it would hurt the rest of the defense too. Um, I do think the front seven had a decent game. You know, Bobby O'Karake had 14 tackles, half a sack, and a fumble recovery. Micah McFadden, solid. DJ Davidson had eight tackles, career high in tackles for him. Aziz Ojolari continues to feast, got two sacks in this game. It's left to be seen if the Giants will potentially deal him for some uh, draft capital or not with the deadline coming up. Brian Burns had another sack with three QB hits, and Armand Watts was active above Jordan Riley. Riley was a healthy scratch, was getting bullied a lot the first several weeks of the season. They say, let's get in a former Viking who's played under Andre Patterson, Giants' current defensive line coach, and it paid off. Watts had two tackles and a TFL. Najee Harris had success early. Not as much in the second half, though. The Giants got settled in. Unfortunately for the Giants, they had 11 penalties, one of them intentional. Uh, they lost the turnover battle 2-1. to one. They could really use Kayvon Thibodeau back, especially for their run defense as well. Um, it's never a good thing when your kicker's making four field goals a game. That means you're not scoring touchdowns. So the offense has to improve. The defense has to be better at stopping the run early and limiting big plays. Giants did that throughout most of the first half, but then Pickens, Austin, Harris got their fair share in half number two, which was definitely concerning. Giants two and six um, roster moves. Two offensive tackles brought in here. Marcellus Johnson and Garrett Greenfield have been signed to the practice squad. Um, you know, Andrew Thomas officially on season ending injured reserve. Um, you know, Josh Azudu did not start in this game. Right now they're with Azudu, Neil, and Chris Hubbard at the tackle position. That is not reliable at all. Marcellus Johnson and Garrett Greenfield brought in. Uh, Marcellus Johnson was on the practice squad to start the season. He was released and then signed by the Vikings for a little bit. He was released by Minnesota yesterday, back with the Giants. Greenfield, another 2024 UDFA who came from over from the Seattle Seahawks. Good build, 6'6", 310, nice size. Um, we'll see how he can slide his feet and you know maybe get acclimated to the NFL game. Who knows? So those are your two newest New York Giants. And to clear space for those two, the Giants move on from safety, Javarius Owens, 2023 sixth-round pick, and fullback slash tight end, Jakob Johnson. I never quite understood that signing in the first place, and I kind of felt like he stole a roster spot from Jack Stoll, which I did not like. And if you don't know, Stoll is crushing it with the Eagles right now. He's basically starting in 12 personnel with Dallas Goddard out. So him and Calcaterra are really carving it. Clearing up lanes for Saquon Barkley down there in Philadelphia, um, down the turnpike. But yeah, sticking with the Giants, they have to get better in the coming weeks. Otherwise, the season will be a wash. We might have to talk about Dable's job security later on in the season, and I certainly do not want to do that. Um, all right, folks, so Sam and I will be live Wednesday night. Um, we'll start our show around 8.30 p.m., It'll be a Halloween night special. We'll be joined by Marty Jones, uh, resident Washington Commanders fan. Very excited to preview week nine, a game I will be in attendance at. It was just at MetLife last Saturday for Notre Dame. I'll be back there this upcoming Sunday for Big Blue and the Washington Commanders. Folks, appreciate you all. Make sure to subscribe to Big Blue Avenue on all social media platforms, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. Ring the bell, smash that like button, subscribe for notifications. I appreciate you all. And without further ado, let's go Big Blue.